Welcome back to a second example from chapter five. So in this case, um, and we kind of set ourselves up philosophically in the previous example, we don't have the mass of this bale of hay. Certainly, if you wanted to, you could just give it a mass, five kilograms, whatever you want it to be. But we will see that that mass also does not play a role here because in a very similar way to the previous example, no one is currently pushing or pulling on this bale of hay. So in the real picture, we are watching this bale of hay zoom by us. In the classroom, I always say, imagine we're just looking out the classroom door and down the hallway, a bale of hay um, goes uh, sliding by and we're all wondering to ourselves who pushed it. That happened before we started looking at it though. So this bale of hay is slowing down and it's slowing down because of friction. So far, this picture should look very similar to chapter two instead. We've got velocity and acceleration pointing in opposite directions. So the forces that we have in mind here, we want to think about um, our kind of standard forces. So we've got, we've got gravity, and that's straight down. So the force of gravity, mass times the acceleration of gravity. We have the normal force straight up. And then this thing is moving to the right, which means friction is acting against the motion. It is pointing opposite the direction of motion, which is in this case to the left as I've drawn it. So mu k times fn. So we note to ourselves in our free body diagram too that the acceleration points to the left. But in friction problems, as we saw once and will continue to see, the first thing to do is we need to find the normal force. So first, find the normal force. We always, always want to start at the very beginning, this force equation. And then recognize that here, in this particular case, acceleration in the y direction is zero, which means that the normal force minus the force of gravity is zero here. Now, I've said this in the chapter four examples, and I'm gonna say it again here, we absolutely must never just write this down and assume that it's true. A lot of students start to do that for some unknown reason, and we need to recognize that although it might show up a lot, when we are trying to make simpler problems that don't have a lot of angled forces, this is not a fundamental statement about objects in general. It came from the fact that we happen to only have two arrows that have to be equal and opposite in this case, but it is not always true. So in this particular case, but not always true. The next thing we want to do is find the acceleration. And that's going to be looking at the net forces in the x direction. And what we have been training ourselves to do is to take the forces in the direction of acceleration, in this case friction, minus the forces opposite the direction of acceleration. There are no forces here. So it's just M A. So F friction equals M A. When we plug in that friction is mu K times the normal force, which in this case is M G, we see that just like the previous problem, because there is no push or pull, the mass will be able to cancel out here. And so our acceleration is mu k, which is 0 0.3, times gravity, which is 9.8. And that's going to be our acceleration, which means we get 2.94 meters per second squared. Now this is very specifically to the left because we want to make sure we recognize that what we've found is the amount of acceleration. We still have to be thinking about our chapter two understanding now. The fact that we're looking for the distance, the bale slides before stopping, 
means we need to rephrase the question, find blank when blank, just like we did throughout chapter two. We're finding the final x location when the final velocity is equal to zero meters per second. So this uses the, and I'll highlight it here for us, the way that I normally do, this uses the vx equation. And this is from chapter two not from chapter three, which is more recent in our memory, but this is a one dimensional problem. Okay, so we'll write down the equation before we plug in numbers. That's always been the case for us. And the key thing is that our zero gets squared, our 15 gets squared plus two and then this is extremely important. The picture showed this. The idea of left shows this. We need to have this be negative because it's in the opposite direction to our um, velocity, which we chose to be positive, and our counting of distance, which we chose to be positive. Okay, so we have um, the final x that we're looking for if we're just choosing to start at some zero point. And so we can start to solve for this. All right, so let's simplify this a bit. So zero equals 225 minus 5.88x. We will add 5.88x to both sides. And then we will divide, now that it's all by itself as a term, both sides by 5.88, to get that x is equal to 38.3 meters. So quite a considerable distance, but it is also true that this um, bale of hay is going about 30 miles an hour. So this is one example of many where we need to recognize that everything we do in physics 125 kind of builds on itself slowly. So the foundational information we have from the first chapters continues to be built upon as we move forward through the semester. So if you have any questions about this, um, the most common mistakes I can uh, point out, and I just want to kind of summarize them here at the end, a lot of students decide that there has to be some kind of push force, sometimes using the 15 as a push force, um, and a lot of other students get stuck on how to do this without being given the mass, instead of going through the process and recognizing that if we just kind of stick with the same steps that we always do, mass ends up canceling out because there was no additional push or pull force. And then once we have our acceleration, which is the end of the chapter four and five ideas, we then use it in our chapter two idea of kinematics, now that we know what the acceleration is, we can solve for that x value when velocity equals zero. So I will see you in several more examples of plenty of forces at angles and ramps and all of that exciting stuff that we've been seeing since chapter four began, but now with friction involved as well. I will see you in those next videos.